We know the basic shape of a hierarchy is a pyramid. However, the pyramid is only sustainable as long as everyone on the bottom doesn't advance too far toward the top. And if that happens, then there is no more hierarchy. But could that be what Christ actually intended for his church when he said, The teachers of the law and Pharisees love to be greeted in the marketplaces and to have men call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have only one master, and you are all brothers. Clearly, Christ intended equality among his own disciples. But was that equality intended to extend to the rest of the church? That would certainly seem consistent with Paul's favorite illustration of the church, which was a body made up of many parts that are only subject to a single head, which is Christ. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for one another. Logically, we simply cannot have equal concern for one another while occupying unequal positions. In fact, that's why Paul went to great lengths in his illustrations of the body of Christ to emphasize that every part is equally important. Furthermore, this is why Paul referred to his own disciples as his peers, using words like partner and fellow worker. Also, when Paul and Peter wrote letters to the churches they planted, they appealed to the elders they had installed as a brother or a fellow elder, as an equal, not as a boss instructing his employees. These are clear examples of a true priesthood of all believers, the church as a spiritual community built on cooperation rather than subjugation. This explains the recurring theme to willingly defer to one another instead of an org chart that requires deacons to defer to elders and elders to defer to pastors and so on. You see, without the equivalent of middle managers between us and our God, everyone in the church must be intentional to honor one another above yourselves, serve one another, be subject to one another, regard one another as more important than yourselves, and so on, or else the cooperation will simply break down. So what happens when it breaks down anyway, when we simply disagree on something and no one is willing to defer? In Jethro's model, which we discussed in the previous video, you simply escalate the issue through the levels of the hierarchy and let a superior decide. But in a world of equals, where can you go? Jesus gave us an answer, and it was radically different from Jethro's. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. According to Jesus, instead of appealing upward to some superior, we simply need to reach outward to our brothers and sisters. When saying this, Jesus was intentionally relocating the locus of spiritual authority from the upper ranks of any sort of hierarchy into the midst of a spiritual community. And that community would come to be known as his church. So I hope you'll join me next time for the final installment in this series on church hierarchy. If you like this video, please check out the rest of my blog at churchanarchist.com. There you'll find other videos, cartoons, blog posts, and a lot more. Or if you prefer to simply watch my videos on YouTube, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching.